Hello, I am Mal. Welcome to another edition of Old School Sundays. And this week we're featuring Star Trek Birth of a Federation. This is a 4X space strategy game, turn-based, that came out, I believe, in 1999. Uh, like Master of Orion 2, this game was published by Microprose using the uh, Star Trek Next Generation uh, license. Uh, it's compared to Master of Orion 2 as our most 4X games. Uh, and this was supposed to be like a spiritual successor, and there are certainly some similarities, which we'll go through. Um, but I think the game stands on its own. I think it's uh, unique enough, and it has enough flavor from the Star Trek Next Generation sort of game world uh, to make it its own unique title. All right, I'm going to put a link, actually, like right about here-ish. Yeah, right about here. <laughs> I'll put an annotation on the video. Uh, if you're already familiar with the basics of Star Trek Birth of Generation, you can click on this link and go to sort of the heart of the gameplay, which will be in the next video. This video is going to serve a, a purpose as a, a mini guide to kind of show people how to play the game if they want and to give additional background. OK, so first things first, if you want to play Star Trek The Next Generation or, and you already own it, like I own it on CD, then what you can do is you can go to Armada Fleet Command and I'll put a link in the description below this video. Uh, in their downloads section, they actually have a, a full installer for the game. So if you already own the game like I do on CD and you just want to be able to play it on a more modern machine running Windows 7 or 8, then that's probably your best bet. So if you want to play the game and you want to follow along with me, then why not you head over there and grab that? <laughs> okay, let's get into uh, a new game here. We'll look at the setup. Configure game parameters. All right. So, you have, first off, the factions in this game. Cardassian, Federation, which is what we're going to be playing as in this in this particular series, the Ferengi, the Klingon, and the Romulan. Now, one of the things um, that people have been critical about the game is that the factions don't always do what you think they're going to do as based on your familiarity, perhaps, with Star Trek. Like, for instance, you know, the Klingons are probably never going to surrender a fight, but if you're, you know, beating them down, they actually will be like, yes, let's sign peace. And it's just not <laughs> not something they would do. But that aside, I think the overall flavor of the different factions, uh, they did a pretty solid job with. Um, I, I don't have any beefs with how they interpreted them. Um, I'm just giving you just a little bit of background on on some things that have been said over the years about the game. Now. Civilization level. So each faction you can see underneath here, you can choose between beginner, early, developed, expanded, or advanced. This is merely going to increase the uh, the level of technology that's already available uh, for that particular faction. So let's say uh, I wanted to give myself a little head start. Well, I could say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and put myself at early. Or if I wanted to maybe put myself uh, a little bit ahead and then make sure I'm going to have a challenger, uh, I could do something like this, right? Or even really make sure and go like that. But, you know, be careful with that. <laughs> you could you could end up uh, with a runaway AI pretty quick. What I like to do is just start off with beginning tech for everyone. That's sort of my favorite thing to do. Now, under preferences, you have minor races. Now, this is very significant in uh, Birth of the Federation, in particular if you're going to play as the Federation, because you do have problems even if you get sucked into war, taking over other uh, colonies and, and uh, subjugating them has huge morale penalties for you as the Federation. So the way you're supposed to expand um, and sort of, you know, influence events is going to be by encountering minor races, building up a rapport with them, and then eventually having them join the Federation as full members. So we'll get into that more as, you know, once we get into the actual gameplay. But for minor races, if you're playing Federation in particular, is extremely important. So how many do you want? Well, you can go with none. Not recommended if you're playing as Federation. Few. So there'll be, you know, a smattering of them. Some. Uh, this is actually a little misleading. Some is... There's a lot. If you set at the sum, in my experience, there's quite a few. And then you have many, which means you're just bumping into minor races all the time. So I obviously don't want none. Uh, I want more than a few. I'm going to go with some. Uh, so there should be plenty of minor races for us to interact with. Now note that not all minor races you come in contact with are going to be friendly. As a matter of fact, many of them can be hostile. 
Um, sometimes you can't ever get them to join the Federation. Uh, they'll be more, um, you know, more likely to align with the Romulans or the Klingons or what have you. So just something to bear in mind. You can set your difficulty level. Simple, easy, normal, hard, impossible. Uh, this just gives the AI, as with most Forex games, it just gives them uh, additional resources and boosts. Uh, for purposes of this playthrough, I'm just going to do it on normal. Um, if you folks really, really want to see me play on a higher difficulty, uh, then let me know. We'll see how this series goes. I've, play I've played successfully on hard and on, on impossible, but sometimes, particularly on impossible with this game, a lot of it is um, sort of RNG based. Uh, especially if you're playing as the Federation. If you run into a really particularly good minor race right away, um, then good, pretty good likelihood that you'll be able to pull it off if you're if you're not overly aggressive. Um, but again, we'll just go for normal on this one. Strategic timer, tactical timer, I'm not going to worry about those. I am going to leave random events on. I think that that's kind of makes it more interesting. I'm going to leave tactical combat on. You could just have it auto-resolve. I want to control it manually. And then victory conditions, vendetta or domination. Uh, we're going to go with domination, which means we just basically need to control the galaxy. Shape of the galaxy. Irregular, elliptical, ring, spiral. Uh, this is just how do you want the map to kind of sparse out. Uh, spiral can be interesting because there's a lot in the core. Hmm. But I think I'm going to go for elliptical. And then in terms of size, small, medium, or large, uh, this really just comes down to how long of a game do you want. If you start with small, then if you have everyone in here, right, all these different races, you're going to run into them pretty quickly. Uh, medium is a, a relatively good balance, takes a little bit of time to discover uh, other civilizations. It allows you to kind of plan out a little bit better. And it doesn't have such a long end game, but even medium games can take a long time to finish. That's one of the criticisms of Birth of the Federation. It's never really bothered me, uh, but that is something people have said about it that, you know, it takes like forever to finish a game. Eh, it is what it is. Okay, and then large, just plan on, you know, starting it on one birthday and then maybe finishing the game on your next birthday. <laughs> We're going to go with medium, so we'll accept that. Okay, so then we have a little bit of flavor text here about the different uh, factions. Uh, Cardassians will go to any link to ensure the loyalty of their subjects. Uh, you know, they have... Uh, their ships are pretty strong. They, uh, they're good at the whole spying bit. Then you've got uh, the Federation. Uh, diplomats are very skilled. Most minor races have a favorable opinion, favorable opinion of them. Ferengi, as you can expect, is a society built around profit. Klingons are, you know, all about, you know, like proving to be the best warriors. Uh, they do have, some of their ships do have the ability to cloak. Then you have the Romulans, who are essentially the, uh, the sneaky, sneaky guys. Um, their ships actually, especially the, the high-end ones like the Warbirds, are incredibly powerful. Uh, they can cloak. The Romulans are actually probably the easiest race to win with, in my opinion. The United Federation of Planets actually are not that easy to win with um, because you have so many restrictions on, on how you handle warfare. Uh, the Romulans, you can just pretend to be nice guys if you want to be, and then come out of nowhere and, and, and smack people down <laughs> because their ships are powerful. They, they get like a free turn of fire uh, from a, a cloaked from decloaking, right? So, uh, yeah, they're kind of nasty. Um, each faction also has um, specific uh, sort of wonders, if you want to call it, special structures that they can build. Um, so we'll get into that as we get into the gameplay piece, but that adds some additional flavor to each faction, which I like a lot. All right, let's say accept. Oh. Probably need to click the United, United. <laughs> of Planets. and accept. Always remember that expansion is achieved by diplomacy, not by the military. Starfleet's mission is to preserve the peace. 
Our ships are not intended to start wars, but to end them. We attack only as a last resort. All right. So we attack only as a last resort. So let's go through the interface here. Starting at the top, this is if we want to advance to the next turn, thus the reason it's labeled turn. <laughs> this gives us a summary of things that have gone on. And from the previous turn, obviously we don't have anything because we haven't gone through a turn, but you have events, you can look at relationships, gives you an overview of who you have contact with. This is going to show you your, um, you know, the prime, the prime factions. And then when you have minor factions, you'll be able to look that up as well. System overview. What it's doing, how much food it has, its industry, its current morale, which is incredibly important, particularly when you're playing the Federation. So you'll be using this screen quite a bit. So here's the map selection, large map, small map, just gives you a little bit more focus. We'll leave it on large map for now. Events. Military, if you, if you, if you, uh, I can almost speak. <laughs> if you tag one of these different things, it gives you different overview information here based on where you're currently highlighted. Okay, so right now I have this highlighted. If I go here and I select these other tabs, then it's going to give me information relevant to this square. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Seoul, my main system, right? And I have, because I'm in the military tab, I have two ships. I've got a science vessel, which is essentially a scout. Uh, so you can see here it has a galactic speed of one, so it can move one per turn, one square per turn. It has long range, so you can see it can go pretty far out, actually really far out, because this is large map, so look how far it can go. Galactic scanner range two, so it can give you some basic information up to two squares out. Now, let me explain that. Let me de-click. As you can see here, it says scanner strength in the top right-hand corner. Negative 27 is what I currently have. As I build up different infrastructure on a system, or if I put star bases up or what have you, I can increase my scan strength. Now, that is important for monitoring, not only just for discovery, but it's important for monitoring uh, what might be coming to, uh, you know, to eat your face off, <laughs> so to speak, right? You need to be able to know when something's uh, coming to harm your empire. So like right here, you know, we don't have enough information. We, we only have five scan strength. We know that there's an unknown ship in this system, but and we don't have any information about the, the planet there because our strength's not high enough. Same thing here. We don't know anything about these systems. So we're going to have to go over manually with a ship and check it out which we will in a moment. All right, now let's look at the, the system overview. So in Seoul, we have one, two, three, four, five planets that are colonized. The way you know that is that they have a green letter underneath them. Now that doesn't mean that, um, that just means that the other ones are not inhabitable, right? Gas giants, yeah, can't, can't settle on those. In your home system, you always get all of the planets right away. When you settle new worlds, uh, you can pick which one you want to settle on, and then over time, you'll build up across the system. So let's take a look at some of these bonuses. The little tree, see, if you hover over, it'll tell you. That's additional food, or I don't know if that's a tree. Uh, maybe that's supposed to be like wheat or something. Who knows? Anyway, that's the food symbol. <laughs> This is energy, so say we're getting plus 75 here, plus 25 here, plus 50 here. The system has dilithium in it, which you need to build starships. If you don't have dilithium, you can't build. So let's say I want to, let's say I've got three or four different shipyards um, across my various systems, and I want to build three start building three ships in a turn. I can only build based on the dilithium that I have. So it doesn't do me any good to have multiple places to build ships if I don't have dilithium. So that's pretty darn important. So just keep that in mind. General information about our faction. 
thousand credits. We get we're getting fifty seven credits per turn. We have one Dilithium. We have no events, and we have no status with any of the other major factions because we have not met them. All right. Let's go ahead and search here. Yep. So we're gonna send our science vessel there. I'm gonna leave my colony ship in the main system. We'll just leave it there for now. If I double click down to the system. Actually, hold on, let me show you that. So from here, I'm just going to double click. I come down to the system level and this shows you what I have available. Here's my build queue over here. I'm currently doing trade goods, which I'm not going to stick to. Let's look at the structures that I have. These are all type one structures. As I upgrade my technology, I will be able to build better structures that are more efficient. And eventually I'll actually get rid of certain things. Like for instance, automated farms. Actually, I could get rid of some of these right now. Yeah. Structures I'm going to scrap five of them. Mm, actually, that might be too many. Let's scrap three. Structures scrapped. Because I don't need them. So I'm paying for additional, I'm paying for additional upkeep and whatnot. The other thing is that when you go to, uh, when you go to upgrade them, the number the number that you build is or how long it's going to take to upgrade them is based on the number there are. Right. So if I've got, say, 15 farms and I want to go to type two farms, then I'm going to be building 15 type two when I could be building seven. If that's enough food for me to, you know, support my my particular system or whatnot. OK. Well, let's see. Currently have. OK, so hold on. We have production farms. This is actual industry to build things. This is energy to supply power to building special structures, orbitals, things like that. Data bank is your ability to protect yourself from being spied on or to do events on others. And then universities is your research. Any highlights here in these hash marks would be your labor pool. So I'll show you an example. We take some people out of food. No, nope, no, nope, don't want to go negative. So I have two people I can reallocate. So I'm going to reallocate them to research. And then I'm going to click on energy. Do I need a shipyard? Yeah, I need a shipyard. But I have more energy than I need, it looks like. So let me go back to production. Let's take some people out of energy. Okay, I took one person out. Put them into research. I'm going to go ahead and go to shipbuilding and I'm going to start working on another science vessel and another colony ship. Yep. And then I'm going to go over to and forgive me I'm trying to remember. There we go. That's right. If I right click on the main screen, it brings me to this is the map. This is the system. This is research. This is diplomacy. This is internal security. So this is where you manage all of your spy type stuff. So I'm going to go. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click here on my research. And then you have these various categories. So as you go up in biotech, that'll give you access to different structures. It'll give you access to different ships and whatnot. All right. Well, unfortunately, I had a crash there. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, iffy when you're trying to record this uh, this particular game, or at least it's that's been my experience so far. So unfortunately, because it didn't have an autosave, um, my my system got regenerated or my world map, but we hadn't explored anything, so I'm not too concerned about it. I did everything else the same, so we're just going to proceed. I'm going to take my scout ship here and we're going to go check this out. And let's see what we got. A uh, pulsar. OK, well, that doesn't really help us. Let's go down here. An alien culture has the Vulcans. Stopped. Hey, the Vulcans have suppressed their emotions in favor of pure logic. Their clarity of thought would be an asset to our growing Federation. OK, cool. So I'll show you. Um, is that them? No, they just ran into us. Oh, so they must be over here somewhere. Interesting. 
Okay, well, we'll go try to find them in a moment, but I need to show you research, which is, I think, where it crashed on me. So let me go again to get to these options. You right click on the main screen, and then this is the research option. And what I am going to do, let's see, hold on. Tech field database. Let's go to computer. Hmm, hold on. Object database. I want, there's a research item. Where's it at? Genesis Research Lab, Diestrom Institute. Here we go. Some atomic simulators. So plus 150 research on every planet that you, or every system that you build this on. This is huge for the Federation. So what I like to do right off the bat when I'm playing them is give, um, give energy, because it requires six energy to build these. I just give energy a little bit of a, of a boost. Okay, right now I'm not getting any additional percentages to research types. So when I go to management, I just go to energy and say, hey, okay, let's give you 25% or 20. Come on. There we go. That works. And then I lock it. Okay. So this is always going to be ahead until I get to level six. And then the others, I just try to balance, leave it balanced out pretty much. Yep, that's fine. And then... Come on. Okay. Locked. Locked. There we go. So that's how I'm going to run it for now. Um, until I can get up to level 6 energy and get the uh, subatomic um, simulators. Okay? So anytime you want to know what something costs, I would go into ships, but there's like a 3D model that spins and that's what crashed it, which I, I hope doesn't mean that combat's going to crash. Uh, that would be unfortunate, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but if you click on any of these, you can then see what the requirements are at the bottom. So like if I want something um, in specifically in development, like the Federation console, it'll tell me what the council does, plus one morale empire wide. And then it tells me what tech is required to be able to get access to it. Okay. Go back to the main screen here. And let's take a look at diplomacy because we have met the Vulcans. So they're already starting off as cordial when they get all the way up here, which I believe is worshipful, something like that. Then um, you can actually ask them to join or sometimes they'll just a they'll just offer to join. They'll be like, we want to be a member now. Here's what I will tell you. Hold off for, for a while on adding anyone to the Federation. You're like, what, Mal? Why wouldn't I want to add them right away? Well, here's why. The AI uh, seems to, you know, have bonuses and builds more quickly than you do. So if you give them a little bit of time before you actually have them join you, then that system that you get that gets added to the to your, you know, to your resources is going to be much better developed. So just try to hold off a little while. Now, you can do some basic things, like we're going to try to request friendship with them. We would like to propose a new peace treaty, or we can change the tone. We believe time has come to a firm treaty of peace. Will you accept? I'll go with that one. Okay, it'll be indefinite duration, and we have proposed it. Let me grab my scout ship. Let's take a look at the system too that we discovered. A uh, bunch of energy bonuses, but these worlds are not that great. You know, when you hover over them, desert, volcanic, volcanic, you can see that they only have 0.5 growth rate and their max population is really low. This is not a particularly good system. Diplomatic messages have been received. Vulcans offered us a friendship proposal, so we can double click on that. Uh, let's see. So it's automatically, should have automatically taken effect. Event. Oh, here we go. Event. Yes, we will accept. Treaty will be accepted. Nice. So now we're buddies. 
And here's Vulcan right here. As you can... What? Yeah, we're going to let them... <laughs> we're going to let them, you know, work on their system and whatnot. We're not going to even try to get them to join us right now. Let's go check this out. And I guess I'll risk it with the colony ship and go up here. An alien culture has been discovered. The Anticans are not as advanced as they would have us believe. An important first step would be a resolution of their conflict with the Sele. Okay, so here's a perfect example. Messages have been received. Um, a perfect example of a, a race that we could get eventually, right? But they're neutral right now. So there's lots of different ways to do it. You can gift them, kind of bribe them and whatnot. We're not going to do anything with them right now. We're just going to say, okay, we've met you. That's fine. What do we got here? What's this system? Jungle. And Arctic. Yeah, man, we're not having, not having the greatest luck here on the Diplomatic systems. Messages have been received. Okay, Vulcans have offered an affiliation. Um, okay, I guess we'll take it. He will be accepted. Praxis. Yeah, just terrible, these systems that we're getting. Let's go explore this one, then. What do we have here? Baron... Baron, Baron, Arctic. <sighs> yeah, it's not so hot. Hmm. But top population here will be okay-ish. I guess we'll settle here. Orders. Oh, we can't colonize because there's a Vulcan ship here? Okay, well, I'll wait for them to leave then. Oh, combat occurring in their system, huh? Okay, um, let's just hail. A task force has been destroyed. Oh. An alien culture has been discovered. The Sheliak interpret their treaties very strictly. We should exercise extreme caution in making any agreements with them. Uh. Okay. Federation breakthrough in energy. So now we have plasma two uh, reactors and we have wind turbines. Okay, so this is another minor race. If I remember correctly, these were the this was the dude that uh, killed Tasha Yar. Yeah, it's these guys. I think. I don't remember if they, it might be, but you can see that they're hostile right off the bat. They don't want to be friends with us. So who knows? We'll have to deal with them eventually. And they did have they had a ship or ships in their system. I tried to hail them. They attacked me. I lost the ship. That's what happened there. So, eh. Okay, let's see if we can colonize now. No, I, can't, I still won't let me. Why not? What's the problem? I'm not sure why it won't let us do that. Hmm, let's go another turn. Oh, declared war against us. Really, right off the bat, huh? Oh, I remember why we can't. We have to terraform. There we go. So let's terraform this one. Yeah, if it's not, if it's not, I guess a you know a, a more hospitable world, then you have to terraform and able to, and able to do it. Okay, let's see. And our new science ship can go. Well, there's a wormhole here we could check out. Hmm. Let's just go over here. Oh, this system's nice. Yeah, this is really nice. Okay, we're going to need to get that. How long until we get our colony ship? 18 turns, huh? Okay. So what I might do is use this colony ship to terraform these worlds. Or terraform a world here. And then move over and immediately start terraforming here. Yeah, that's that sounds like a game plan. But in any case, I've given you kind of a general overview of Star Trek The Birth of the Federation. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you'll continue to uh, take a look at the rest of the series. If you did like it, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. As always, I appreciate your comments and feedback. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Mal, and I will see you later.